James Green, short series shenanigans. All right, guys and gals, this is gonna be episode one of a multi-part series. Uh, this is gonna be gear repair rebuild, okay? Spur gear repair. So I think that's what the title of the series is gonna be. So I've got a couple of gears here, spur gears. Uh, this is actually a build slash repair for a viewer named Randy Coe. Um, super great guy, lives in Missouri. Um, my understanding is these are off of a Buffalo drill press. Um, late 1800s, early 1900s, it's a flat belt driven, similar to the one that Keith Finner has, I believe. Uh, same style type, runs off of a, a a motor with a flat belt. I mean, you guys know they're out there. So uh, he reached, uh, or I reached out to him when I saw he had posted pictures on social media, and I'm like, hey, yeah, send them to me. And these were very, very, very dirty. They're uh, uh, of a cast material, iron, steel, whatever it is. Um, so that era, it took several soakings in purple power four different times for 24 hour periods. Prior to that, I ran them through my solvent tank, scrub, 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 scrape. I mean, it had all that grease worked into every groove. Uh, so after, <laughs> I spent a couple of weeks, you know, sometimes I sit in for a couple of days, I'd pull them out, super hot water, mix up another batch, put them in, scrub them. I did that several times until the last time uh, it stayed purple color looking, which told me, okay, that it didn't turn milky color or you didn't see a lot of oil or grease floating around top. So I knew at that point after I, it was the fourth time, I'm like, okay, that's good. Uh, scrub cleaned. And then what I did is I heated them up with the torch. I didn't show that just to kind of do the bake, the bake off of, and you can see the holes, the porosity holes in this, yes. And I posted some pictures on Instagram. You can see where that one is busted. And that tooth is busted. So, you can really see those holes in that thing. There aren't any on that side. Um, same thing with this gear. It had a busted tooth right here. Okay. Um, on this side where it has a wick that goes in here, you can see... And I don't know if this is because of casting or how it's set. Maybe it had some moisture perhaps, but lots of porosity holes in this area right here. I'll hold it up there close. Um, I didn't see any on this side, but uh, we did heat it up, let it cool. And so we're gonna fix this one. We're going to TIG weld with silicon bronze. That's how I've decided to fix these. So I got to looking through everything. Let me set this down right here. When I got this and I got it cleaned up, after I got it cleaned up, because I didn't see these initially and I saw all these porosity holes and I thought, wow, that's, you know. So I thought, man, you know what? I think I've got some material. So I'm actually going to fix this, but this is going to be his backup. I decided to make a gear. Okay. I've got the blank in here. I happen to have some material, uh, some stress proof that's just a little bit bigger than this gear. So I thought, perfect. And it's a little bit wider uh, in length. I mean, it just, it was like this piece was made for it. So I thought, perfect. So what I'm gonna do, <coughs> we're gonna be making a spur gear, and then we are gonna uh, fix this. This will be a separate part in the series when I go to weld these up with silicon bronze. There's lots of different ways you can do it. You can, uh, you know, braze it with a torch or whatever. I've had really, really good luck using silicon. You could use silicon bronze or aluminum bronze. Uh, and then we're going to go in and reshape these. Okay. I have a gear. I looked through all of my stuff, which is another good thing. <laughs> I've talked about uh, year before last when I was at the, the last time I was at the Summer Bash. I did a big trade with uh, Keith Rucker. VintageMachinery.org, if you guys and gals are interested in vintage machinery and manuals, VintageMachinery.org, uh, you know, he's uh, 
Keith Rucker is a really, really good friend of mine. Him and I did a trade deal to where I cleaned up a bunch of his, uh, there was a bunch of cutters, gear cutters, I mean, all sorts for, you know, different things. I, in that pile, in that pile, I happened to have and dug through, I had the perfect gear cutter, okay, for this pitch spur gear. So I was like, yes, I don't have to make a uh, make one like out of a piece of high-speed steel. I mean, you could do it. So that'll be a series. Uh, I mean, that'll be part of the series when we go to make this and cut it. So without further ado, I mean, we're just going to show you this stuff. Uh, these are going to be 30-minute segments. And uh, like, subscribe, spread the word about my channel, you guys and gals. And let's get started. So this is going to be what we're going to start making. I've got you guys sitting on the end of the lathe here. I am going to be pretty soon this next week right across here on the top I'm gonna to make a fixture to where I can hang a lamp and I'm gonna be able to hang this camera from it if I want to so let me get you guys dialed in here and I'll leave you wide out there so you can see for right now I'm gonna set this behind me uh, so the hole that we're gonna do first is uh, one inch it's a uh, one and five eighths is what it is. One inch, 625 thou, we've already measured it. <clears throat> and so, when we measured it, we used the old snap gauge and this, you know, one to two mic, and that's what it ended up as, excuse me. So, oh, let's see, let's get started here. We're gonna do low gear, and I just changed all the flood coolant out on this thing today. <clears throat> And I gave it a good re-leveling from the moving process. So I spent a couple hours doing that today. So there we go. So after redoing the tailstock and, you know, moving was a nightmare. I'll just say that. All right. So let's get in the groove of things. I'm going to take this off so you guys can see the DRO a little better. When I zoom in there. All right. Let's get started first. Let's get a hole in this sucker. And we'll get to making chips. Yeah, I, I am going to invest in a uh, capture card. That's what it is. I need a capture card for my computer so I can actually do live videos with this camera instead of my phone. So I'm looking forward to getting the finances squared up so I can do that. All right, so we're going to come in here. We're going to do that. Uh, and we're going to need you know, the drill bits. Let me get everything ready. Let me grab my drill bits real quick that I want to use. All right. Matter of fact, all right. I'm going to grab that and the other set right here. All right. Plus, this is going to give me a chance to show you some new stuff. Okay. Uh, Recently acquired. Uh, now I bought this set. Okay, this set I paid for right here. Uh, this is a 115 piece set. Now I bought my first one from uh, Drill Hog. That's what this is, Drill Hog. But this is their titanium set. Okay, and Mike at Drill Hog, super nice guy. I'm always. You know, I want I wanted to try something a little different. The M7 I've been using, uh, been very pleased with. So you've got fractional, letter, and then wire size. We're going to use these. I'm going to test a couple different sizes. Let's just go through, uh, kind of torture test, if you will. I've already used a couple of them. Uh, just mess around the drill press. Also, what he sent me to try out is a new style. Now this is just a small set, um, but they're made out of pig steel. It's new from Drill Hog, and I wrote that on there so I could know which ones they are. Now this is a small set, and you know they have a warranty. I'm covering up my little number here, uh, but it's sixteenth through quarter. So we're going to start off with some of these pig steels. Uh, just well, let's do some starter holes. You know, we'll just start off and we'll run a couple different sizes with these. See how they run. Uh, these are regular right hand drill bits. Um, so we're going to use these and obviously once we get above half inch then I'm going to go to my other big ones but it's going to give us a chance to uh, let's play with our toys you know that's a, that's what us big boys like to do all right now 
enough of that. And let's come up here. Everything ready. And yeah, I thought it was out. Let's, there we go. All right. There. All right. Let's go to. Just need to go over into high gear. 460. All right. Now normally I just grab a half inch bit and go from this point, but I want to try some of these smaller bits to see how they work just because, you know. And well, I've got some other materials I want to do some torture tests on, like I want to run through stainless because stainless steel generally eats bits pretty good. So let's start off with, let's just do like a 3 16 okay, and then we'll jump up to a quarter inch, that way we can, we've used a couple of these. That'll definitely go all the way through. All right. All right, let's get this set here. Okay, let's lock it down. And what I'm, I'm gonna slow it down just because I don't wanna, I could drill it that fast, but I don't want to sling coolant all over the place. And I like using flood coolant. Uh, just because, you know, anytime you can keep a bit cool. So let's just drop down to 190 RPM. That should work out pretty good. Get our flood coolant going. And I'm going to try to zoom you guys in just a little bit here. Pardon the wiggling of the camera while I get it. So you guys can see exactly what's going on now. Alright. There we go. <laughs> I forgot to put it in low. There you go. All right, so we're running about 190 RPM. And all we got to do is that in. Doing pretty good. Back out. I want to make sure I So it went through pretty good. You know, I didn't want to go too fast on a small bit, but we'll step it up a little bit. All right, so we've got a pilot hole. Back up, back you guys up a little bit. On this go around, you can see how fast I'm going to feed it. So that one did pretty good. So now we're just going to step up to quarter inch. And I've got some other material that I want to run these in. But, you know, this is the first chance I've had. Literally, this is the first time I've used these bits. So 
I've got some other material. I've got some stainless I want to drill on, some 304 stainless, and I'll do a torture test on these just to see. All right, well, let's step it up. Let's go from 190, let's do 300 RPM, and lock her in and get it. Let's just do a little oil instead. But you don't need a whole lot because we've already got a pre drilled hole. Plug it up. Clean the chips. So that wasn't really much of a torture test for it other than to say I've got to use them and they did all right. But I know for me a test on how well bits do is running in 304 stainless. And I am gonna do some of those and I got some other materials. But this is just some stress proof. So that was the pig steel. Like I said, not much of a torture test, but it didn't break. And these are in fact made in Sunburst, Montana. All right, so now we're gonna go to the big titanium set here and let's just jump straight into let's just run a half inch okay <clears throat> let's get on with this instead of just doing a bunch of step drilling so we're going to run a half inch and then well i've got some other bits we'll step up to and then we're going to end up boring it out with a boring bar okay all right and this one we're going to run flood coolant and just because how I like to run them, and I don't like to, you know, I like to run flood coolant. I mean, I could run this to where I could torture it and break it, but I don't want to do that. This is not the time for that. We're going to run 70 RPM flood coolant like what I normally do. When I drill holes like this. How, and um, so I like using my bits how I normally do. We'll do a torture test. All right. It just a little bit. I didn't get that. There we go. I didn't have to tight. I saw the bit turn just a little bit. All right. You guys can see how fast I'm rotating this. Turn it down just a hair, and you can see how fast I'm feeding it. But 
once you get a burr started, if you just keep going, and you can feel the pressure. Just keep going with it. spun a couple of times in the chuck. The only thing with these bits is they do not have the flats, the three flats on them. I would say for me that is a drawback. Um, I like to have the three flats on them like the M7s. So that would for me that would be a one detractor on them. And that's the only issue I've had so far. But even a lot of good name brand bits don't have the, uh, you know, and it didn't hardly mark it. It was me because I didn't get this thing tight enough. So, but tip held up good. There's no chipping or anything. Looks real good. No issues that I can see. Still got its edge. So, that's a pass so far. All right. Get that set out of the way, and we're going to go set this over back here out of the way. And next, we're going to grab I've got bits behind me here, a whole big drawer of them. So, here is a I don't know if that'll fit in there or not. Let's see. Nope. silver and Deming bits over here. And yes, they are drill hog bits. That's going to be the next size that I use. Well, they were right here. Huh. Sorry about that. My apologies. So, you guys out a little bit. All right, so, silver and Deming bits from Drill Hog. These are actual M7, you know. Uh, these have the three flats. Now, you can get them in 9 6 and 16 or you can also get them in 30 seconds. Um, so, for your in between sizes. Uh, oh, also, they do have some new metric ones they're just coming out with, and he's sending me a set. A complimentary set, so I always like free stuff. We're going to try them out and see. So these actually have, so we're half inch. Let's step this a little bit. Let's go seven eighths, and then we'll step up from there. Set these right there. Out of the way, and these are half inch shank, and these have the three flats so you don't have to worry about them turning. All right, same procedure flood coolant. fast on feet and
that came loose out of my... That's a first. I was feeding it too hard. Let's bump. Huh. Interesting. Well, I had the chuck spin in the deal back here. That's not fun. This is the first time I've really loaded this tailstock since doing all this, so I was really getting with it. Probably a little too much. All right. So I'm gonna have to take a look at that and find out why it did that. All right, let's try that again. tried to feed it pretty aggressive so that may have had something to do with it. I think I have a piece of uh, plastic stuck in a line somewhere. I thought maybe cleaning it out today, but I may have something hung up in there. I'm guessing. Oh yeah, there we go. I may have to take that line off and just replace it. to go so I'm not going to sit there and bore you with me drilling up to the next size or whatever uh, I will in the next video I'm going to show you using the boring bar and it's going to be just boring it out I'll show you a couple of quick passes and after we get this one set up and then we are I've got a mandrel set up so we can hold this whenever we go to make a uh, uh, turn the external diameter. I'll show that. So I'll go ahead and get this board to size. You know, I'll talk you through it. It's very, real simple. Nothing fancy. So let's see. Yep, we're almost 30 minute mark. So I will show you that, the mandrel setup, and I'll show you a little bit of boring when I'm near the end. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Spread the word about my channel. And remember, take care of yourself and take care of your family. Because remember, at the end of the day, all you got is your family. Catch you guys later. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.